Hey everybody, um, so today I just want to do a quick video on some of the different ways, and this is not an exhaustive list either, but just some of the different ways that you can connect LabVIEW to different cheap I.O. So when I say cheap I.O., you know, I'm talking about stuff that's not like your NI DAC hardware, your Compact Rio, stuff like that. I'm just talking like, you know, hey, a couple bucks and I can have some, you know, digital inputs, outputs, analog inputs, outputs, you know, PWM, maybe I squared C, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, just wanted to show some of the different ways that we can do that. So the first one I wanted to highlight is the what's called the CTI, and that is the Community Training Initiative. So here's the website. If you go to gcentral.org slash CTI, you'll find it. Uh, but essentially what this is, is it's a program put together by Steve Watts right there and uh, Derek Bomarito. Um, and it's meant to be like a low cost way to start playing with and learning LabVIEW. So they have a whole kind of training suite put together. They actually have a virtual machine you can just download, which uh, basically gives you like an OpenSUSE uh, virtual box that you can, that already has LabVIEW Community Edition installed on it. Um, and then you can basically just, yeah, run that and you've got your development environment set up and then you can go start, you know, playing with stuff. Um, but one of the, the cool things that this does is it comes, it, the whole kind of training is built on the Raspberry Pi Pico um, devices. So they've got basically firmware that you upload to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, and then it responds to various serial commands to either you know, read data back in LabVIEW or to do different things. Um, so yeah, that way um, I can just upload my firmware to my Raspberry Pi Pico and then I can talk to it in LabVIEW and you know, tell it, hey, to turn this pin, digital pin high or to read some data back or whatever. So um, really cool uh, whole program. The whole initiative is awesome. Um, and for the community, I think it's great as well. Uh, but yeah, the, if you get you know start looking at this, um, you'll find the code um, down in the PDF here where it's in a GitLab repository, but the link's in here. Uh, where you can basically just yeah download that uh, both the firmware and the LabVIEW VIs for talking to the Pico, and then yeah you've got some really cheap I/O. So I think a Raspberry Pi Pico is something like two or three bucks. Um, you can go crazy and get the Wi-Fi enabled one for somewhere around like ten bucks, nothing crazy. Um, but then yeah you've basically got super cheap I/O um, that you can integrate with LabVIEW really easily. Um, and I know they are working on some enhancements to this as well. I know like I squared C is on the horizon where you can basically uh, use your Raspberry Pi Pico as an I squared C communicator. So it'll actually talk to the I squared C devices and then communicate data back, you know, just over plain serial. Um, so yeah, this is uh, one really cool resource. Um, here's the URL. If you're interested, that allows you to basically integrate with uh, yeah, Raspberry Pi Picos, like I said. Um, another one I wanted to highlight is the Lynx Toolkit. So um, this, if you install a Community Edition, comes installed with it already. Um, but this basically allows you to communicate with your um, uh, various like cheap I.O. devices um, from LabVIEW. Um, so basically, it, it works similarly to the community community training initiative in that you're basically going to install some firmware on these devices um, and then from there you can uh, communicate back and forth in LabVIEW. Um, so the system, these systems aren't standalone necessarily but you're able to you know read data and command them to do stuff over um, serial. So pretty cool. Um, this one supports Arduino and it supports a couple different Arduino targets. Um, if you go on the website you can see the full list. Um, but yeah, basically you can upload the firmware to it and then I can just use, there's some simple VIs for like an analog read, analog write, digital read, digital write, um, you know, uh, PWM functions. And there's also stuff built in towards for like specific uh, kind of maker sensors and stuff that you might interact with. So like, you know, seven segment display or an LCD screen or, you know, some various, you know, cheap you know, sensors that come in like those maker kits usually for maybe like, you know, measuring the temperature in the room or, you know, uh, stuff like that. So, you know, just a whole bunch of just, you know, your typical maker stuff. Uh, you can see here it's got support for a whole bunch of stuff. Um, they also have 
Raspberry Pi. Um, so this works a little differently um, than the Arduino, but you're actually able to deploy LabVIEW code to your Raspberry Pi. Um, it does run headlessly, so if you want like a user interface, uh, you're not gonna be able to just create one in LabVIEW and run it on there. Um, but you can run something headlessly on a Raspberry Pi with this. And then it also supports BeagleBone, which I've never used BeagleBone. Um, I've, I have used the Arduino and Raspberry Pi stuff and got it working. The Raspberry Pi stuff took a little more clunking around to get it working right. And I was also using like a Raspberry Pi 4, which I don't think is actually officially supported on here, but I was able to get it to work. Um, the Arduino stuff worked pretty well though. I didn't really have issues. Um, so yeah, BeagleBone, I don't really have any experience, but yeah, if you use BeagleBone, you also can work with those. So that's another way you can uh, get some cheap I.O. connected up to your LabVIEW system. Another one I wanted to highlight is this Arduino compatible compiler. So um, I actually have this home, home slash student license um, and I actually really like this tool. I think it's really cool. Um, this one works a little different from the other ones, um, whereas like all of these, you download some sort of firmware to the device and then your system can talk to it. Um, this one actually takes your LabVIEW code and compiles it to run on the Arduino on its own, which is kind of cool. Um, now, it doesn't work on any Arduino, but it works on a lot of the models. Um, they actually have, yeah, a little list here. So you can see the Yun, Uno, Do, Mega, Leonardo, and Nano. Um, and this way, it basically creates a palette um, in your palettes in LabVIEW that is like, these are all the functions that are supported in LabVIEW. So it defines different structures like loops and whatnot, but just stuff that this knows how to convert from LabVIEW to something that can run on these targets. So that way you can then go program your loops and your you know, different IO and whatnot in LabVIEW, um, and then basically deploy it to your Arduino. Um, and I've actually had really good success with this. I actually really like it. Um, it's kind of nice too, because then I can do like a lot of all my development in LabVIEW, and I don't need to like go switch back and forth between. <laughs> Shoot, but, uh, sorry, bless. Um, but yeah, between like the Arduino IDE and LabVIEW and whatnot, I can just program it all in LabVIEW, and yeah, I've had good success with this. So um, I think it's a really cool tool. Um, allows you in LabVIEW to um, yeah program the Arduinos directly, um, and then just yeah compile to those. So. This is another really cool one. It is paid, um, but yeah, I got the home student edition for 99 bucks, and I think it's really cool. It works well. Um, I don't think it's actually been updated in quite a while, so eventually there might be some issues with uh, you know features and whatnot. Um, but yeah, for now, it actually works great for me. I haven't really had any issues with it. Um, uh, so yeah, that's another one. And then last one I wanted to talk about, um, I don't actually have anything to present on this, but that's going to be uh, what's called Firmata. So um, if you're unfamiliar with that, basically in Arduino, um, there's, uh, they've defined what they call Firmata, which is basically a list of commands that can be sent to the Arduinos um, that allow you to read and write different I.O. So if you open the Arduino IDE and just go to like your examples, you can find like the Firmata image and you just need to deploy that to your target. Um, and then basically just using simple serial commands, you can read and write I.O. Um, so yeah, you can, uh, you know, uh, turn different digital inputs well, you can read the state of digital inputs, and you can also turn to different digital outputs, high, low. You can read analog inputs. You can do all the stuff you can do with Arduino, but it just basically adds a serial API to that, um, which is relatively straightforward. Um, but yeah, if anyone is interested in that, um, I actually pulled a lot of what I've done with that from some work Steve Watts did on setting up some of the Firmata stuff. Um, so yeah, but I'm happy to share that if anyone reaches out. Um, but yeah, that way basically you just upload the Fermata image to the target and then you can communicate it communicate with the target using Fermata. Um, and then one last thing I wanted to show actually is you can just straight up use serial. So, you know, in your Arduino Arduino code, if you're using functions like serial print and serial print line, um, well, you can have LabVIEW catch those messages. So rather than using like the serial monitor that's built into um, into the Arduino IDE, you can use LabVIEW. Um, and it's as simple as this, right? We are you know, configuring the serial port, so you're gonna need to set all of your parameters however the Arduino set up. Um, 
And uh, yeah, and then we are using a termination character. Um, and then here we're just flushing the buffer to get rid of anything that's in the buffer, you know, right now. And then we're just listing if there's data at the port. If there is no data at the port, we're just pulling that data out. And we can then go convert it from a string to whatever data type, and in this case, right, like plot it. Um, so yeah, really easy to read data off the Arduino. You just need to tell the Arduino to print that data, which, you know, typically when you're setting up code in Arduino, you do anyways just kind of for troubleshooting and debugging, right? You're going to add those serial print, serial print line functions. Well, just set up LabVIEW to connect to that serial port, and boom, you can now pull that data into LabVIEW really easily. Um, and all, you also can do writes. Um, so I can say, hey, you know, write, and I can define the format of what I'm writing to it as well, right? So I can tell it, you know, I can build my own command protocol however I want and basically give it different things. So yeah, here I can say, you know, hey, pause, um, and it'll pause. So yeah, um, up to you how you want to define that. You just need to tell your Arduino to listen for that serial data and capture it as it comes in. But yeah, that would be the last way you can connect to some cheap IO is just, yeah, um, use your serial print, serial print line in Arduino, and then capture that in LabVIEW using just simple Visa functions. Um, so yeah, I think that's the, the main ways you can get cheap I.O. connected up in LabVIEW. Like I said, that's not an exhaustive list. There's other ways out there. Um, those are just, I would say, probably the most prevalent ways. You can talk to an Arduino or s other similar um, cheap I.O. in LabVIEW. So thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.